streaming, huh? Yeah, yeah. Let's see, uh, make sure everything is ready. There's a slight delay from my preview here. Okay, looks like it's going on. Um, stream preview it says it's live. I don't know if the condition's good. Bit rate. Uh, let's see. So I am a uh, setting up. So I do a quickie little overlay and. Blender, so I hot key to there. That's like the little preview there. I already got like my scene set up, so it's going to be not a full screen overlay, which would be, which in my case would have static with a PNG. But this is like a little flare element, you know, like a little uh, animation thing. And throw on the screen or whatever, it's small. So in this case, I have it under 200 frames, and it's like this little Nerf dart gun that spins around. Just as an example, it doesn't have to be this. It can be anything animated in Blender, so it doesn't have to be this. It's a little Nerf dart gun, and I just have it rotating, so it's like this. And I keyframed it on a starting zero frame, I guess, and... Another frame is 200, or not 200, 150. So I keyframed it on the very first frame and frame 150, but then I render one frame less so I don't have duplicate frames on the first and last. So it's made to loop, and if I go in animation, I set the F curve here to linear. So the rotation, uh, it's just rotating on the, on the z-axis, that's all it's doing. Nothing fancy, but you can do, you can do fancier stuff, it's just a... Uh, so I'm going to go back to the default view here. So basically I have this Nerf dart gun that's rotating. And then of course you set it up with lighting and everything. And then it renders something like this. I got the render settings pretty quick, you aren't the highest quality, but it's just to demonstrate it. Keeping this pretty quick, so you can kind of see what's going on. And you get something like that, and it's got the transparent background. That's part of doing these overlays, is most of the time you want the transparent background. At least the way I'm doing this, it's made so it goes transparent. I think most people would think this would be a GIF image, but no, because GIFs tend to have issues with like matte and aliasing. That it's a little tricky. I mean, you can do it, but I am going to show you how to do a transparent video for a matte. So I already pre-rendered this. Let's get a uh, video sequence editor stripped together. So, I rendered this as PNG frames, so now well, you don't have to worry about animation creation or whatever. To me, it's always good practice to render out two frames. Whoops. So, I'm going to scroll down here and uh, do that in the output thing, and you set up the frames. So, it's already been pre-rendered in frames and stuff. So, pretty much like that. So what I am going to do is go to video editing, which brings the video sequence editor. I can't exactly tell you how to do it in the newest version of Blender, but I'm sure a lot of things are barely the same. I don't need this overlay stuff. But what I'm going to do is add a new image strip. And I think it's desktop and stuff. Murphy, and I'm going to hit A because I want all these frames in my image strip. So there we go, uh, all those. So I have all the frames, it's pre rendered, and I'm just using an image strip. And with this, you can also go into compositing, add effects like glare or certain dressing or like weird distortion effects if you wanted. 
but I'm not going to mess with the compositor this time around. I'm just trying to keep it quick. So you see you have the animation strip like this. So that's basically what the animation is. And this will overlay and you see the checkerboards for transparency. So that's what you want. So what I'm going to do is go back to the main screen. And I am going to do is change this to animated. So that's going to differentiate it from the frames. And what I am going to do is an output. Instead of PNG, we're going to do FFmpeg video and encoding presets. So there's different ones, H.264, blah, blah, blah. I think it is H.264 and MP4. And what is wanted is QuickTime. I think Flash also does transparency, but in this case, you want QuickTime. And Kodak, um, if I remember right, it is going to be QTRLE. And the other one that does RGB. So if you do this correctly, instead of having just black and white and RGB, you get the RGBA option on the output. And that tells you you have the transparency in your video. That's what we're after. So we're setting this up to QuickTime. So QuickTime. And we're setting it up to QTRLE. If you have the newest version of Blender, I think they also do WebM uh, version 9 or something like that. And that might even be better than this. As far as compression goes. I'm not sure how well the Flash one works with OBS because I haven't tried it, but I do know that QuickTime does work with um, OBS. So I have that. And you can set up these settings. I'm not sure. Um, whatever. We're not using audio because this is just a looping little animation to go on top of stuff. You might be able to do audio sound effects, but. So it's going to be a media file, but we're not doing that. Um, I just tend to leave these alone, but you could probably adjust them to get them smaller. Uh, yeah, there probably is a way to make it a lot smaller, but uh, I don't know offhand. And encoding speed slow, small file. Uh, probably mess with that. I'm just going to leave that alone, though. Ooh, excuse me. So once you get all this done in these settings and you have your video strip put in from your frames, next thing I do is to hit render animation again and it should generate a .mov file. So I'm going to do that. And you see it's rendering animation frames. And I think, yeah, the QuickTime should be a move format file. I don't know if it does the extension automatically. If not, I'll have to do the temp thing. So, if I were to go in OBS, and I'm just going to go, like, my away from um, keyboard message. I'm going to mess around in OBS to show. So I should have a move file. And I'm going to do is add an extra input source, which will be a media source. Da, 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 da. It's streaming, but I think it works. Media source, and I'm going to do. Well, you can't see it, but I'm going to do that. Yeah, just. And should be a file browser. I'm going to look for it. Yeah, it's a move file. And it'll list your uh, name with the uh, frame numbers appended behind it by default, I think. I don't know if there's a way to turn those off, but I am going to add the move file. And it's going to be a local file, loop, restart. I haven't changed much of the other things. I just pretty much click on the loop. And I try to keep the file supply small. And also, the dimensions for the image file have to be divisible by two. 
but I guess the smaller it is, the less overhead you'll have in OBS. So I can make it smaller. It also has something to do with the compression too. But I'm going to load it up into OBS. And you see it up here in the upper right corner. I'm going to unlock my preview so I can position it. And yeah, you can scale it around. And now I have this overlay. See? So it's right there. It's an animated overlay in MOV format directly right out of Blender here. Isn't that cool? And if you keep it small, you can use it on your stream, like, uh, probably tie it in. I don't have the fanciest version of OBS. I have, like, an old version, because that's what runs on my computer. Newer ones, I think you can link uh, certain events to streams, so you can make overlays for that. But you can do it right in Blender. You don't have to use other software. It's, uh, that's kind of the gist of it right here. And I know this is a short stream, but if you make a clip or some other thing, I'm sure you can save it for later. <laughs> uh, not sure if I have much of an audience, so you, a lot of people will probably miss this. Uh, yeah, right there. And it's streaming, so... Uh, you can hide uh picture and just... There. For now. Look at that. I'm not going to save it like that or anything, but you get the idea. And I'll lock the preview on here and then. <laughs> yeah. But you can overlay that with video because it's transparent. In this case, you know, I didn't really show off the transparency. You get the idea. I went over it from the start. It was quick. It was quick. So. It's not hard to do. So there you go. Uh, current version of Blender. I'm not sure where the the stuff is. Like all these menus and stuff. I know they're in there somewhere, but and the hotkeys are going to be different. But that's pretty much it. Yeah. Render your animation with transparency. You keep it a small size, divisible by two in both dimensions. And make it so it will loop. You might have to drop the last frame so you don't get a duplicate frame. If you have a duplicate frame, it will stutter and not look so hot. And then you can do your compositing effects. The effects if you use nodes. Compositing effects. And then you render, like I said, to... Uh, Render out to FFmpeg and FFmpeg video on output. And set the presets for QuickTime, QTRLE, and then you'll get the RGBA option, and then you can render to video with transparency. And the other one, I think, in this old one is Flash. There might be some other formats that support it, but in this version of Blender, I know it's just QuickTime and Flash. And then the current version of Blender, I think you also have WebM, and there might be some other, uh, oh, what is it? I don't know if you got it in the Triska rug, but I think there's one, there's like one or two more formats you get in the current version that will do transparency. And WebM might be a little bit better depending on how your OBS is, so. But this one I know is available with FFmpeg, and if you have an older computer and have to run older Blender, of course you'll have this option too, so. It's a good starting point. Alright, I'm going to wrap it up, and maybe I'll do some stuff to highlight the video or whatever, try to save it for a bit later for now. Well,